salvation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in Christ, it is a scary thing to be in the presence of the living God. It is a terrifying thing to stand before him knowing that we have fallen short, that we have sinned not deserve any kindness or goodness from him. It is a terrifying thing to realize this, and yet, how oftentimes do we come into church completely unaware of God's presence amongst us? How oftentimes do we come into church thoughtlessly, not realizing, not confessing the truth that God is in this place? As Jacob himself said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Certainly, perhaps we've even at times thought, oh, I wish I could have that kind of experience. Not realizing that that's exactly what God has called you to. He has called you here to his house. He has called you from your sinfulness. He has called you in the midst of your sinfulness. He has called you in the midst of death to life. He has called you to come into his presence. To come and see that Jesus Christ is here for us. As we say in the glory and excelsis, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. This is what happens. We are invited with all the shepherds, with all those who have gone before us, who by faith believe in God and trust in Christ and His promises, we are invited to come and see Christ in His flesh. We are invited to come and receive Christ. That is a judge, fearful, full of righteous wrath and anger. We are called to receive Christ as He comes to us in mercy and kindness. And yet, so oftentimes, we forget this. We're thoughtless. We don't pay heed to God's presence amongst us. We act as though this is just another gathering place, just another place where we can come and feel good about ourselves for an hour, perhaps. Or as I'm often reminded, a little bit more than an hour. <laughs> but this is not what happens here on Sunday morning. What truly happens here on Sunday mornings is not just another gathering place. This is not just a social club. This is God in the flesh coming to you, granting you the forgiveness of sins, taking away all that is wrong, all that is bad, all that is hateful, and replacing it with his righteousness, with his peace, with his mercy, with his justice, with his truth. We see how oftentimes it is an easy thing, though, to forget, to make the emphasis about us rather than about him. As we read in our gospel reading for today, getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city, and behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blasphemed. Now, the people who brought the paralytic are the people who believe. Have you ever tried to take someone who is immobile someplace? It's easier in our day, certainly. But this paralytic could not walk on his own. There were no wheelchairs. There were no electric scooters. There were no uh, handy caravans, what brings Wally here every Sunday. There were none of these things. They had to bring this man, carry his burden themselves. And they didn't. Because they believed that Jesus was who he said he was. There was no burden too great to bear for them. There was no cost too high to pay. For they believed and confessed that Jesus is who he says he is. The scribes, on the other hand, watch this. How foolish they think. How silly these people will bring this paralytic all the way here. How, how ridiculous that they think that this man can do anything for him. And then when 
Jesus actually does something for him, something that is far greater, far more valuable than the cost that they put in to bring this paralytic man to him. That is, when Jesus forgave this man his sin, what do the scribes do? They scoff and mock and accuse Jesus of blasphemy. This man is blaspheming, they say. And how often times is the church accused of the same thing? As I stand before you every Sunday saying, in the stand by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I've heard people who don't believe that this is true, that God is not present in our divine service, that God is not present in worship, but rather we are the, the focal point of worship. We are bringing something to God. Say that this is blasphemy. How can you say, you forgive someone? How can I say, I forgive them? Because Jesus has said it. And Jesus does not lie. Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus is God in the flesh. And Jesus has made his dwelling place here, beloved, with you this day. And you come in with the cares and concerns of the world on your heart and on your mind. You come in so many times, even as I do thoughtlessly, carelessly, not confessing what is actually happening here in this holy house. You come in tainted with sins and unrighteousness. And Christ receives you. He doesn't cast you away. He doesn't drive you out. He doesn't, like the scribes say, call you a blasphemer, even though you are. He receives you, and he forgives you your sins. And though you may not feel a certain burning in the bosom or some kind of great emotional high when you come to the divine service, it's irrelevant. Christ does his work. And this day, beloved, Christ is doing his work. Do not disbelieve, but believe, for here at the altar, Christ is present for you. Here from the pulpit, from the lectern, you hear his words of life and light and salvation for you, his words of absolution and forgiveness for you. As you walk up, past the font, you're reminded of that grace and mercy which called you from death to life, which called you from being a child of wrath to a child of God for the sake of Christ crucified for your sins. Do not disbelieve, but believe. For the devil and the world and your sinful flesh would all say, this place is not so special. Sometimes it smells kind of musty. The lighting's not always great. The carpet's a little worn around the edges. There's uh, hymns that I don't like, and hymns that I do like aren't sung enough. The pews aren't comfortable. This is no place special. This is what the devil would tell you. This is what the world would tell you. This is what your sinful flesh would tell you. I've sat in those pews a couple of times. I know that your sinful flesh is probably telling you now, this place is not so great. But beloved in Christ, this is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Christ has opened it up for you. And like this paralytic man, you by faith come to receive these gifts, no matter the cost. You, by faith, desire these gifts, no matter the cost. The world may deride you. The world may call you names. The world may say you are a blasphemer for not going with the spirit of the age. But Christ has called you. He has forgiven you. He has healed you. And in Christ... You now are partakers of heaven. In Christ, you now stand here saying, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. 
And this is the gate of heaven. In Christ you call out and God hastens to you. In Christ you call out and he hears you. And he's answered your prayers. In his bountiful goodness he continuously keeps you from all things that may hurt you. For his sake you daily are putting off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And in Christ, you are being renewed in the spirit of your minds. You are putting on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. In Christ, you are truly righteous now and holy. In Christ, you confess how awesome is this place? For Christ is here, giving you everything that is needful. Now may this peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting.